So let's move on to our next speaker, Pinchan Chen, who's from the University of California at Irvine. And she'll tell us about the vagolytic effect of zolpidem on sleep-dependent memory, a trade-off between working memory and long-term memory. Okay, the stage is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Ping Chen Chen. Um, so a little bit of background. We know that long-term memory and working memory are supported by both independent and some overlapping brain functions or neural system. And both domains change over time. For example, our long-term memory decay over time. And recent studies show that our working memory can be improved by repeat training. So um, interestingly, both memory domains benefit from sleep, specifically non-rapid eye movement sleep. So let's take a look of what is sleep. So we have non-rapid eye movement sleep where we have stage one, stage two, and slowly sleep. And we also have this rapid eye movement sleep during which we have vivid dreams. And during stage two, we typically see this spindles or sigma power that range between 12 to 15 Hertz. And during slow wave sleep, we see this slow oscillation between 25 to one Hertz. And that's often coupled with spindles. So how does sleep benefit long-term memory? According to system consolidation, our memory were initially binded together in cortical module by our hippocampus. And over time, after replays, reactivation of memory, the memory traces becomes independent from the hippocampus. And this process is thought to be supported by the sleep oscillation, sleep spindles, which is nested in slow wave that drive the hippocampal memory replay. And many experimental studies have shown that increasing sleep spindles can boost verbal memory consolidation. For, for example, there's a recent study using electrical brain stimulation, increasing slow waves and spindles, and shows an increase in word pair recall. And there's also another study using Zopram to increase sleep spindle and shows an improvement in um, verbal memory. However, on the other hand, how working memory is supported by sleep remain unclear. And there's a strong candidate, slow wave sleep, because slow wave sleep is linked to synaptic plasticity and cortical reorganization. So it's thought to be an optimal brain state for modification of pre-functioning such as um, working memory. However, among those few studies that look at EEG and uh, working memory improvement, some of them suggest a critical role of slow waves or slow oscillation, but some of them show no EEG correlate. So the EEG neural mechanism of how sleep facilitate working memory is still unclear. And interestingly, there is another line of research looking into the autonomic cardiac control so the neurovisor integration model suggests that vagal activity, which is measured by hot river ability, actually reflect the functioning of prefrontal subcortical inhibitory circuit that support our adaptive cognitive success. Many studies have shown that higher heart rate variability during wake is associated with better emotional recognition, better empathy, better theory of mind, and also executive function or working memory. And interestingly, the vagal activity is naturally boost during non-REM sleep. So in this figure, you can see um, the high frequency heart rate variability, which is between 0.15 to 0.4 Hertz. You can see that during stage two in the blue line and slowly sleep in the red line, there's an increase in power during non-REM sleep for High frequency atrophy, which represents our vagal activity or parasympathetic activity. And on the other hand, the low frequency heart rate variability, which represents a mix of sympathetic and parasympathetic control, seems to be higher during REM. 
So to see how bagel activity can be critical for working memory improvement. In our previous study, we use a NAP paradigm. So we tested subjects in a um, operation spin task before and after a period of a NAP versus wake. We show that working memory improve across a period of NAP compared to waking. And more importantly, we replicated the natural boost of high frequency HRV during non-REM sleep and show that this HRV can predict the amount of working memory improvement across the NAP. And the prediction outperformed other EEG um, parameter. So the current study, now that we know non-REM sleep uh, provide an optimal state for both long-term memory and working memory improvement. However, we don't know how different sleep features interplay to support both long-term memory and working memory. So an intuitive possibility is that, is there a manipulation that allows us to enhance one feature of non-REM but decrease the other so we can causally manipulate sleep? Yes, actually it's Zofidum or Ambien. It's a common hypnotic and it's a GABA A agonist, which has been shown to increase spindles and spindle slow oscillation coupling. And also it's able to decrease our vagal tone. So in this study, we recruited 38 young adults and we use a double blind weakening subject design where we administer 10 milligrams of zolpidem or placebo. And we tested the long-term memory using wall pair association task. And we tested the working memory using the operation spin task. And we tested these two memories three times across a two day period. So in day one morning, we we did the baseline testing. And then day one evening, we tested the second time. And before they go to bed, we give them placebo or zolpidem, and it's counterbalanced. The overnight sleep was recorded with PSG. And in the next morning, subjects were tested for the third time. And to look at how EEG and autonomic activity interact during sleep, we use the effective connectivity. So we first spin the data into five minute chunk using 30 second moving windows. And within each chunk, we look at the sigma power as well as the HF HRV. And then we use the effective connectivity to analyze the causal information flow between sigma in the EEG channels and vagal activity in the cardiac channel. This allows us to quantify the information flow from sigma to HF and vice versa. So the result, we show that indeed, Zolpidem increased sigma power or spindles activity during non-REM sleep, both stage two and slow wave sleep. And interestingly, we show that Zolpidem decreased vagal activity during So the placebos uh, and pink purple lines are zolpidem. And if you look at low frequency, so back effect, I'm back. I'm sorry, Penchun, you're you've cut out a couple times during this slide. Could you take it from the top again? Oh, okay. Oh, Oops, sorry, I think we have a, okay, great, perfect. Sorry. No, okay. this, this uh, happens. Okay, so we shows that um, sovereign decrease vagal activity, especially during slow wave sleep where we see this drug. But if we look at low frequency HRV, there's no drug modulation. So it seems that Zolpidem's effect on cardiac control is vagal specific. 
And then we look at behavior change um, for overnight and also over the 24 hours period. We found that indeed work pair association performance decreased over time. However, Zolpidem, the purple one, seems to be able to rescue some memory or decrease their forgetting. On the other hand, the working memory showed the opposite direction. So the Zolpidem decreased the amount of improvement in working memory. So then we correlate those, the amount of improvement with the bagel activity and found that there's a positive correlation between bagel activity during slow wave sleep and working memory improvement. Whereas there is a negative correlation between um, bagel activity during stage two sleep and the long-term memory improvement. And then for the information flow, we found that Zolpidem increased spindles control over bagel activity than vice versa. And interestingly, this information flow can predict the difference between long-term memory improvement and working memory improvement. So the more spindles control over bagel you have, the more long-term memory benefit overnight than the working memory benefit you have. So in summary, Zolpidem decreased vagal activity while increased sleep spindles. And Zolpidem increased the long-term memory retention, but decreased the working memory improvement. And we show an inverse relation between spindle-dependent long-term memory improvement and vagal-dependent working memory improvement. And Zolpidem can modulate the causal information flow between vagal and spindle activity which can predict the trade-off between working memory and long-term memory chain. And it seems that spindles and vagal activities are an antagonistic mechanism that alternate during non-REM sleep to support either the hippocampal dependent memory consolidation or the prefrontal dependent working memory enhancement. And Zolpidem can switch the prefrontal dominant proficiency to the hippocampal dominant memory replay during sleep. And thank you for your attention. I want to thank our postdoc, Hami, for conducting the effective connectivity analysis and Lauren for um, conducting most of the experiment. And special thanks to my advisor, Sarah Mennick. Thanks. Thanks. That was a very interesting talk. Um, so forgive me if this is a naive question, but so you've shown this pretty tight relationship between vagal activity during different stages of sleep and its influence on uh, the two different types of uh, memory. But I wonder if you can speculate or if we know the mechanisms through which vagal tone, vagal activity uh, influences mm -hmm. working memory. Right. Um, it's actually vagal activity is not directly influencing our brain function, it, it's more like a proxy of prefrontal functioning that's easier to measure. I see, I right. see, okay. Yeah, and the mechanism of how sleep benefit working memory is still unclear. It's not like long-term memory, we have this hippocampal prefrontal dialogue, replay. So it seems that from the working memory training literature, it seems that working memory can be enhanced by enhancing the entire brain function, or it's actually slow waves is cleaning, clear up the, the tr our trash in the brain, which allow us to have more plasticity or better executive function. Okay, thank you. We have another question from the audience. Uh, do you see how Zolpidin affected uh, spindle slow wave coupling? and how this could differently affect long-term and working memory. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, we actually didn't look at the coupling in the current study, but in other study from our lab, we showed that Zolpidem can increase spindles and slowly coupling, and that could predict long-term memory. But we haven't found any evidence for the coupling versus working memory yet. Okay. Okay, thank you. If there are no more questions. I have, I have actually a quick question. Please, yeah. Is there yeah. enough time? 
Yeah. I don't know, thanks, thanks for your talk. I was wondering, uh, as I'm sure you know, there are two groups of spindle, uh, fast and, and slow spindles. I was wondering if you looked right. uh, into, in, into this and whether your effects were related to one category or both. Uh, I think they are cut off it's more within the fast spindle range, but we didn't look at the slow spindle range because um, I believe most of the study looking into memory consolidation and sleep are about fast spindle, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it could be a good control actually to show that you don't replicate the effect in the slow spindle range. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it seems that Zolpidem is shift, shifting all the frequency toward the higher frequency band. So we actually shows decreasing theta power, which is lower than the spindles. And we also see decrease in delta power. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. Our next speaker is Elaine.